The modern world owes much to a very small set of inventions and today we're going to be talking about the CCD or the charged coupled device and how it affects our daily modern life. <laughs> My name is Steve Smith, this is TQA Weekly, and if ever you have any questions, comments, suggestions, and or stories, you can always email me at ask at tqaweekly.com, go to my website tqaweekly.com, and either leave a comment to this episode or use the contact form as well. And of course, if you're watching on blip.tv, YouTube, Vimeo, or anywhere else I post to every single week, you can always leave a comment down below. Today's topic is about the charge coupled device. Last week I talked about the scanner, but not the charge coupled device itself. And this is going to be a very small episode, basically explaining why it works, how it works, who invented it, and why it is important to today's modern world. So, first of all, it was invented in 1969 by Willard Boyle and George E. Smith of AT&T Bell Labs. It, the one that we're more specifically interested in has a photoreactive area known as the epitaxial layer made of silicone and a transmission region made out of a shift register. That's what created the CCD. The image that we're interested in capturing is actually pulled through a lens and actually projected onto a capacitor array of photoreactive capacitors that actually collect a charge relative to the amount of light detected by the sensors. So it detects the amount of photons falling onto it and a specific amount of electrons actually collect there related to the amount of light actually shining on them. This array is then processed to recreate the image as accurately as possible. You have two different types though. You have the single dimensional, which is perfect for faxes and scanners, and then two dimensional CCD arrays, which are perfect for everything else. So for those that like photography and film, like we all do, because we're on YouTube and blood.tv and Vimeo and everywhere else at the same time, without the two dimensional CCD, doing this is relatively impossible to do. So while we're on this topic, and we know that they use an array to capture the pictures, basically each one being a pixel, what is actually better? Higher resolution, which means a higher density of these sensors, or bigger CCD sensors that are actually more sensitive. Well, the war of pixel density has been raging on for years, and even though more seems to be better, less is more accurate. So having a bigger sensor that captures more light for every single pixel allows you to more accurately determine how much light there is and give you a better result. Meaning that a bigger array can actually take a better picture in darker scenes than a camera with a smaller sensor with a higher pixel density in the CCD sensor. And for those that are still interested in this episode, what is the difference between CCD and 3CCD? Because we tend to see this all over the place. Well, a CCD is great for capturing the light in a scene, but if you're actually more specifically interested in the quality of the color, you might want to use a camera with 3CCD. It separates the light out with the aid of a kind of prism that allows for the reds, greens, and blues to be captured individually, calculating how much of those kinds of photons actually fall onto these photocapacitive sensors, allowing for the recombination of the picture to be more color accurate as well as more sensitive to each of the specific types of light. And why does this matter to you? Well, folks, without the CCD, we have no scanners, no video cameras, no mobile pictures, the internet does not have pictures, desktops don't have backgrounds, and worse yet, YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, Snapchat, and everything else doesn't exist. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a great day.